about, guys? Look over there. There is crab! Crabs have teeth in their stomach. If you look at a crab at a glance, you will only see its shell, antennae, legs and claws. However, if you turn the crab's body over you will see that their stomach has teeth. This is a puffer fish. Puffer fish that have white spots apparently have a unique habit of building nests. Male puffer fish make round nests in the sand. Their goal in building a nest is to attract the attention of females. Usually, if female fish are impressed, they will lay their eggs in the nest. This is blue whale. In the 1900s, there was a massive blue whale hunt. Records show about 380,000 blue whales were caught. The aim of hunting blue whales is to extract fish oil which comes from the fat of these giant mammals. Blue whale oil is widely used in oil lamps and to make soap and margarine. There is lobster. Lobsters have a hard exoskeleton, or shell, that does not grow with them. To grow, they undergo a process called molting, where they shed their old shell and form a new, larger shell. During the skin changing process, lobsters are at their most vulnerable phase to attack by predators. This is a moray eel. Moray eels also have mucus like other eels, in some types of moray, the mucus contains poison. Moray eels have thicker skin with high density. This is gulper eel. Gulper eels have tiny eyes, which is unusual for deep sea creatures. Bioluminescence might also be used to attract a mate. Scientists believe gulper eels die soon after mating. This is garfish. Alligators are very calm fish, if you get the chance to see one. They will appear to be floating or submerged in water. However, don't be fooled, this is how they hunt. They won't move until a fish startles them and comes close. The stunned target will suddenly be attacked by an alligator fish which will lunge and grab it with hundreds of sharp teeth. Subscribe guys! Well, guys, look. This is a blue spotted ray. Having a beautiful color that can catch people off guard when they see it, this blue spotted ray apparently has a secret weapon. It has two large and medium sized spines at the end of its tail. These thorns can cause a number of dangers if they come into contact with humans. As a self-defense mechanism, the sting caused by these thorns can be very excruciating. This is ammonite. Ammonites continue to make new shells as they grow, but they live outside the shell. They walk through the warm shallow ocean while spraying water radiating from their bodies. A thin, pipe-like structure called a siphuncle leads into the shell's interior chamber to pump and suck in air that helps them move through the water. There is a jellyfish. Jellyfish have luminous organs that emit light or are known as bioluminescent. Bioluminescence is the body's ability to produce light. This light is green and blue. Crystal jellyfish are a type of jellyfish that have bioluminescent abilities. This light is a chemical reaction of proteins produced by the jellyfish's body with seawater. This is a crayfish. Crayfish, or crawdads, are crustaceans that live in freshwater environments throughout the world, except for India and Antarctica. These animals have five pairs of legs, or ten legs total, hence the Latin name for the crayfish order, known as decapita. This is squid. Squid are intelligent sea creatures. They have large and complex brains, even comparable to those of whales. The squid's ability to learn and adapt also impressed researchers. They are capable of completing complex tasks and even exhibit behavior that indicates extraordinary intelligence. This is a hermit crab. 
Not many people know that hermit crabs undergo a molting process. Simply put, molting is shedding the exoskeleton and growing a new one. This process stresses hermit crabs and makes them more vulnerable. On average, hermit crabs molt once every 18 months, but some do it more often. In one molting process, hermit crabs need 4 to 8 weeks. This is a dugong. Dugongs are social creatures, they can be in flocks of 200 dugongs. Therefore, communication is very important for them. Dugongs use two main communication methods, namely sound and sight. Just like dolphins, dugongs use chirps, whistles, barks and other sounds that resonate underwater. Subscribe guys! Well guys, look over there! This is a decapodiformer. Decapodiforms is a superorder of cephalopoda consisting of all cephalopod species with 10 limbs, specifically 8 short arms and 2 long tentacles. This is hammerhead shark. Hammerhead sharks actually consist of 9 species. Meanwhile, 8 of them belong to the genus Ferna, while one species called the winghead shark belongs to the genus Euspira. Each species of hammerhead shark varies in size. Some do not reach a meter, but there are also those that can grow more than 6 meters. This is mouth bass. The large mouth base is dark olive green on the back with light green sides and a white belly. The top of the mouth extends past the eyes. The large mouth base has a similar appearance, but the upper jaw ends below the eye. Bays eat a variety of foods. Wow, this is starfish. A unique fact about starfish is that the shield is a stiff shell that has a rough texture, even thorny, depending on the species. Starfish have a layer of calcium carbonate with tiny spines that deter fish, birds and even sea otters from attacking them. There is an octopus. When compared to other invertebrates, the number of octopus neurons is very large, namely 500 million neurons. This number is equivalent to one dog. Octopuses also have nine brains, of which one is located near the esophagus and the rest are spread across each arm. There is a clownfish. Unlike most animal species, for clownfish looking after and caring for their young is not the mother's job, but the father's job. The main male not only fertilizes, but he even prepares a place for the female so she can lay her eggs safely. After that, the father will look after the eggs and clean the nest of dirt. This is, garnered fish. Even though they are small and often targeted by larger predatory fish, this doesn't mean that gurnard flying fish only eat algae or plankton. This fish is actually classified as a predator. Primarily, they will look for prey around coral or sandy seabed. The main food of the gurnard flying fish is crustaceans, small fish, and various types of shellfish. Thank you for watching guys, see you next video.